This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial. And you know, I'm always up for a good challenge. And today I was challenged for a tutorial I did quite a while ago, about two and a half years ago, on how to do an export from Media Composer and maintain all of your audio channels as separate audio channels in your export. Now this comes in very handy if you're exporting, let's say, 5.1 plus stereo, where you're going to need left, right, center, sub, left surround, right surround, stereo left and stereo right all as one file to send to a station. Now in this lesson I'm going to show you the proper way to do that inside of Media Composer 8.4 and I'm going to show you a couple things that are also very important to keep in mind in the whole workflow process. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And what we're gonna do in our first example is we're gonna take a clip and we're just gonna assume that this clip was either imported or transcoded. Uh, and it's basically an Avid DNX HD proper. I call it DNX HD proper because it is 1080p 23976 DNX 175 8 bit. And you can see that I've taken some audio and just thrown it in here as well. This is just random audio, some sound effects that I could put on different channels. And I put an audio track, a music track in here on 7 and 8, just to sort of simulate sort of a 5.1 situation like I talked about in the introduction. So how do we take this and export this with all of the audio channels intact? Well, what I've heard people do is they will do things like they will come into the audio mixer, they will come to their you know, audio assignment here. You'll see that the sequence mix format is stereo. They can click on that and make it 5.1. They'll get in here, they'll adjust this to be mono, or they'll come in and try to you know, get a direct output. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that the output set right here is based directly on the audio hardware that you have in your computer. And of course, because I don't really have any external hardware hooked up to my computer, I'm limited to stereo and mono. But really, these don't mean anything. I can switch this to 5.1 all I want, but it actually doesn't make a difference when we're doing an export. We're gonna export each of these audio channels separately. Everything is actually done inside of our export setting. So let's get into our export setting and let's use this first clip as the example or this first sequence as an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to come to export and we're going to create a new preset. So I'm going to come into options and we're simply going to come to a QuickTime movie. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is that I am on a Mac right now, which is obviously, you know, fairly, fairly obvious by you can tell taking a look at the at the screen right now. And that's going to come into play in just a second because I'm going to talk about getting ProRes files with multiple channels of audio out. Obviously, if you're on a Windows machine, it doesn't work the same because you obviously don't have the ability to write ProRes files. You only have the ability to read ProRes files, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Okay. Now, for our same as source export, now that's what's important to keep in mind here is that the export that we're going to be doing has to be a same as source export. If I do a custom export, the technique I'm going to show you is not going to work. So let's just put this back to same as source. I don't need to use the Avid Codex because my clip is already as an Avid Codex. And of course, we want to make sure we select video and audio. Now, we're going to keep our color levels as legal range. We're going to leave the aspect ratio as native dimensions. But what's very important that we're going to need to do, because by default, the sequence will always be set to export as stereo. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come to the audio format right here. I'm going to want to select that and I'm going to want to change it from stereo to be direct out. Don't choose mono or 5.1 or 7.1. We want to go with direct out. Once I select that, I'm simply going to say save as. We'll call this QT SAS export. Okay. And I'll say save. And we're just going to send this right to the desktop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this Avid DNX HD proper. Okay. So we've done things the quote unquote proper way of either capturing, importing, or transcoding this clip to DNX 175. All I'm going to do now is simply say save. You'll see that the clip exports fairly quickly. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say open with, and we're going to open this with QuickTime Player because obviously I despise QuickTime X. I'm going to come to the window drop down. We're going to come down to the movie inspector and you'll see now that this clip does have the video, which is the Avid DNX HD codec 
and all eight channels of audio. You can see that it's also 2398. Now I'm not gonna bother to play this again because what I'm gonna do here instead is I'm simply going to quit out of QuickTime. I'm gonna Command and Tab back into Media Composer. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say Link to Media. We're gonna to come to the desktop. I'm gonna select my Avid DNX HD proper. I'm gonna say Open. And you'll see now that if I call this clip up into the preview window, you'll see that I do have eight channels of audio. And if I switch over, there are all of my individual discrete channels ready to be sent to a station. You know, again, obviously, you know, if I happen to be exporting 5.1, we could have our left, right, center, sub, left surround, right surround, and stereo left and stereo right. Now, one thing that I want to move on and talk about, I mentioned this just a little bit before, is about ProRes. Now, it's not necessarily ProRes specifically, but I mentioned ProRes because, again, I am on a Mac, so obviously ProRes, you know, is very relevant to what I'm talking about. We are talking about a same as source exports. Now, if you've read my article recently on Pro Video Coalition about codecs, we know that there are a lot of natively supportive codecs inside of Media Composer. So what does that mean? Well, if you've imported a clip at its native codec or its native resolution, in this case, ProRes is the example I'm using, when you do a same as source export, the source is whatever you AMA linked to and consolidated or fast imported which in my case, you'll see if I stretch the window over, if I come right over here, you'll see that the clip that I've done this to is Apple ProRes right here, okay? Now I'm just gonna delete this clip that I am a link to because I don't need that right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a different clip. We're not gonna use the basketball clip. I'm gonna take a different clip. Again, like I said, that I know is ProRes. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drop it in, and I'm going to select everything. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say export. I'm gonna send it back to the desktop, but in this case, I'm gonna call it ProRes. There we go, we'll send it to the desktop here. Again, it's the same as source export, so it's a very quick export. Now, I know right away that this file is actually a ProRes file because on the Mac, now I'm using Yosemite, I'm not using El Capitan yet because obviously Media Composer is not yet supported in El Capitan, is that I get a preview of this right away, meaning that this is a uh, codec that QuickTime X understands. But again, I never use QuickTime X. I'm gonna come down to QuickTime Player. We're gonna open this up. You'll see there's my chopping of the vegetables. Don't worry about the fact that it's so noisy because this actually came from a 720p clip originally. But if I come back up to my movie inspector here, you'll see again, I have all of my channels of audio and it is of course a ProRes 422HQ file. I'm gonna command and tap back in a media composer. Again, I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say link to media. I'm gonna to link to that ProRes file. And of course, again, we now have all of our channels of audio ready to go. Now let me give you one last scenario because there's always you know multiple scenarios. Now of course we are going with you know Avid friendly DNX HD. We are going with uh, again Avid friendly but a supported codec in ProRes. Now again that could be any supported codec that we've talked about in the past. Let's go a little bit different here. I'm gonna go with a clip that it appears on the surface to be the same but it's actually not. You'll see that this clip right here is called 1920 by 1080 i 23976 and it is an mxf file but it doesn't exactly match the project you'll see it's a dnx hd 175x clip so not exactly the same and i know this because if i take the clip okay and i drop it in as soon as i do you're going to see that i get the green dot here now the green dot immediately tells me that something is different about this clip than the timeline. Now that, to be perfectly honest, what the difference is, it really doesn't matter. Now, actually, I'm just gonna close my tomatoes here because they're a little bit distracted in the background. There we go, okay? So again, the green dot tells me immediately something is going on. But like I said, I don't really care what's going on because I wanna export this, but I wanna get all of these channels out at the same time. Now, most people think, oh, well, Kev, guess what? Different from the timeline, not gonna be able to export this as the same as source. Ah, not entirely true. What I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna select everything in my timeline, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say export. Now, where would something like this come into play? Let's say you had a 23976 clip in a 1080i timeline and let's say you had the entire timeline as 1080i except that one clip. We well, still wanna be able to export same as source, okay? Well, not necessarily same as source, but what you wanna do is export with all of your channels of audio. Well, this technique is gonna let you do that. I'm not gonna choose anything different. I'm gonna choose SAS. What I'm gonna do is choose Avid DNX HD and we're just gonna call this slight difference, okay? And I'm gonna say save. Now, as soon as I do, a window is gonna pop up that says, hold on, 
No clips in this sequence, well, of course, because there is only one clip of my sequence, but no clips in the sequence were found to have the resolution supported for same source export. According to the media creation settings, the sequence will be exported as 1080p 23976 DNX HD 115. Now, I could change that, obviously, in the media creation settings. Rather than same as source, do I want to continue? Now, most people at this point would say cancel, don't continue. But I'm actually going to say continue. It's going to continue to do a quote unquote same as source export, recompressing this file to DNX 115. And I know this because if I right click and I say open with, we'll come back in here. Now, of course, I can come back up here. Now, it's probably not going to tell me that it's DNX 115, which is fine. Okay. But you'll see that I can see that it's Avid DNX HD codec 1920 by 1080. Now remember, it didn't export it same as source, but I still have all of the channels of audio. Now I believe if I right click and I say open with, now I should get media info open here. Let's see. And let's take this. I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. Now you'll see that it's DNX 170. For some reason it's telling me it's 116, but you see how this works. It's basically DNX HD 115. Okay, so not 175 anymore. So all I'm going to do now, because you would think that if it's got the eight channels of audio, I should have all of the audio channels discreetly inside of that QuickTime file. So let's command tab back. Let's right click. Let's say link to media. Let's go to DNX HD slight difference and say open. And guess what? If I take this and drag it into the preview window, I actually have all eight channels of audio. And it wasn't quite a same as source export. It was actually a recompression to DNX 115. Now what's important to keep in mind is that if that sequence had of, let's just use ProRes as an example, had been a two hour sequence entirely in ProRes, except one clip had been a 1080i to 23976 or was slightly different from all of the rest of the sequence, it's gonna take your sequence and recompress it as whatever the media creation setting was. Like I said, in my case, it was DNX HD 115, but you're not gonna get it as a ProRes file, but guess what you will get? You still will get the file exported with all of your discrete audio channels. So if you did need to do a flip over to ProRes because the station required it, you could easily use an application like you know Apple Compressor if you happen to be on a Mac to take that file, flip it over to a ProRes file with all of the discrete audio channels. So I hope this tutorial has shown you how simple it is to export from Media Composer Assuming you're using a supported codec, and even if you're not, you can still export your eight discrete audio channels very quickly and very easily with the click of a mouse. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.